Jerry Horowitz here, the latest edition of Amazing Conversations with my John Franco. We just met the other day, right, John Franco? <laughs> yeah, about 24 years ago. <laughs> uh, John, you were part of a book, um, Six Decades of Amazing New York Mets Baseball. Tell, how does it, as a lifelong Mets fan, how does it look, you look in the Hall of Fame, John Anthony Franco, how does it make you feel? It makes you feel great. I mean, uh, growing up in uh, Brooklyn and always being a Met fan and uh, living out a dream that uh, hopefully one day I could come and pitch for the team that I rooted for. And uh, the winter of 89, that happened. You know, this book, where you're supposed to illustrate, put it out in 220 pages, reminiscent, you know, you got a big kick out of the old timers again, meeting you know, all the old guys. What was it like to meet the Frank Thomases and the, and the Art Shamskis and the guys you know? To run well, it's, with it's them. great to see, you know, the old timers. The first with, you know, the Frank Thomas, the guys who were one of the original Mets, right. right? And then I grew up with the 69 team. So meeting, I had met Art Shamsky before and I had met Cleon Jones right. before and I had met Tom Seaver and, and Matt Lack. But uh, being on the same field with them and, uh, and uh, wearing the same uniform at the same time as them, you just have to kind of like pinch yourself because these are the guys that I used to watch way, uh, growing up and now I'm part of an old timers day with them. You were what, eight or nine in 69? In 69, I was uh, eight years old when they went. I know, I know you were uh, partial to Tug McGraw. What did you like about Tug? I just liked uh, Tug's uh, enthusiasm. He was just a little, a little right. wacky, you know, as a left-handed. And, and so me being left-handed and I was a little wacky, you know, all through, through uh, high school and college. And, uh, uh, always wore his number in college, and uh, when I had the opportunity here to take his number, uh, I was more than happy to do it. Uh, I met Tug a couple of times when he worked for the Phillies, right. and I uh, was very fortunate enough to have him ride the motorcycle. In Does he get his 300 yeah. save? Yeah. Uh, he comes, do you, do you didn't know he was coming in on the no, motorcycle? No, no, I, I thought it was the Knight Rider or something. Yeah. You know, he had the helmet on, and he, he almost, uh, he almost got a, Bit the dust coming out of the bullpen, I know that. But uh, when he took the helmet off, I was very surprised and very happy to see that it was Tug that uh, presented me with the motorcycle that my teammates had bought for me. And another you know, highlight of your career, being named captain by Bobby Valentine, it was at that time it was uh, you know it was uh, Gary Keith Hugh, um, and then David later on. Right. That's one of the highlights of your career. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's you know it's very unheard of that a relief pitcher is the captain right. of a baseball team. It's usually like an everyday player. And for my teammates to think that highly of me and Bobby to think that highly of me uh, and just to have the respect of the, my teammates and the organization and whichever way I could have helped, you know, while I was here, you know, four years, five years that I was the captain, uh, more or less, you know, when a guy had a bad out or a guy had some stuff going on, uh, we used to talk about it and if I could help him out, I would. December 6, 1989, you get a call. I had a really good career starting a career with the Reds. You're traded to the Mets. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what that made you feel like when you got to call? Yeah, it was because all went along, I was reading stuff in the, in the papers that I might be going to the Yankees. Yeah. And I remember getting a phone call from the Cincinnati Reds saying that they wanted to give me a three-year contract. And I said, well, I don't, you know, let me speak to my agent. And let's, you know, and then they said, Lou Pinello, who was the manager at the time, wanted right. to meet you and have lunch with you. And then like three days later, I got a phone call from Cincinnati and said, you've been traded to New York, but they didn't say the Mets, they just said New York. And I said, well, okay, and hung up. And then I was like, I guess I'm going to the Yankees. And then 10 minutes later, Joe McElvain called, then I knew it was the Mets. And I was very, very thrilled, very, very happy, uh, uh, least to say that there was a little party in my house that night. What do you say to Mets fans? You know, the team in the underdog, you know, the, the lunch pail fan, I mean, how, what do you say to Mets fans? I guess there was a little bit of this appalling one. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, Patience. I mean, it's very hard. This game is very hard. There's, there's 29 other teams trying for the same thing that we're trying for. Uh, nobody's going to lay down and give it to you. You have to work at it, and you have to uh, come every day prepared. And uh, just, just to try to be patient. Uh, now that we have new ownership here, uh, you can see that the organization is moving in the right direction. And uh, hopefully in the near future, not too far, uh, we'll have a championship here. Took a, how exciting was the, uh, the Subway Series? The Subway Series was very exciting. Uh, I wish that we didn't have the interleague play yeah. before that. I think it would have been even more exciting. But, uh, you know, in the Subway Series, there was something online, a world championship. And I thought it was great for the city. I thought the Yankee fan, Met fans, the base, they were great uh, all through the city. The uh, support that we got and the support that the Yankees got, uh, it was just great. Uh, the you know, the electrifying, you know, you walk into the stadium, the Yankee Stadium, the Mets yeah. uh, State Stadium, and it was just crazy. It was loud already even before the game started. John, go back to some people in the book, the guys you played with, Alfonso, uh, you know, uh, Al, 
Well, was your favorite teammate at Jahan, or is that hard to say? Well, my favorite teammate is Al Leiter, actually. Yeah. Uh, we're very good friends. Al's the godfather to my youngest daughter, mm-hmm. Ella. And uh, But, uh, you know, all along, I mean, I've been here, I was here for 15 years. I had a lot of close friends. Uh, Jeff Ennis, who, we, who uh, had passed right. away yeah, a couple of years ago, was a good friend. Uh, Dennis Cook, Turk Window, right. uh, Mike Piazza, uh, Robin Ventura, Todd Zeal, who works for SNY now. So, you know, there's so many guys along the way, you can't name all of them, but uh, I've never had an issue with anybody, and I've always got along with all my teammates, and uh, I consider them all uh, close friends and family. Do you feel like the 2000 team, you win 90 games, go, go zip through the playoffs and lose to a great Yankee dynasty team, five games by five runs, I think they run mm-hmm. differentially. Do you feel like it's, can it's coming up to the 25th anniversary? Yeah. I'm the 2000. I know it's it's gone by so fast. Yeah. I, you know, a lot of a lot, I think a lot of uh, people tend to forget about that team. I mean, we were we were underdogs in every series. Yeah. I believe you know we went and beat the Giants. We we just carried the Cardinals very easily, and then the Yankees. We we fought tooth and nail. I mean, uh, that first game could have went either way, but uh, unfortunately, we fell on the short end of the stick, and uh, you know the rest is history. You know, SI thought you were the perfect guy to put with all the names. It's gonna make you feel proud that. All the great names we've had, they wanted to put your name on the cover. You know, a yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I'm, I'm honored to have that uh, to be on the cover for SI. And uh, it's six decades of uh, New York Met baseball, right. the history of the team. And there's a lot of guys in that book that I grew up watching. There's a lot of guys in that book that I played against. And there's a lot of guys who were my teammates. So it's very interesting reading. And uh, it should be, it was very well done. And uh, so be, uh, hopefully the Met fans enjoy it. Can I take a rest for one second? Sure. Uh, you know, you said Tuck McGraw was wacky. You were pretty wacky. Too. <laughs> I just got to tell the clean stuff that I can tell. The Tuck would have been proud of himself. One of my probably one of my closest in the game of baseball, but you you always told me uh, that the guys don't like you, they won't screw with you. Well, exactly. Better work. Exactly. So through the years, I guess it was like a little bit. I just tell some of the cleaner story. <laughs> put a rat in my rat bag. <laughs> put ice cream in my um, my soup pocket. You know, my eyesight's not the best. So you used to put. I used to leave my binoculars on a, a bench in the locker room. Yeah. I used to put eye black on my uh, on my uh, binoculars. I used to go up to the stand. I used to look like Petey from the Little Rascal. You looked like a little raccoon. Yeah, and huh. and and they had these like. And we used to cut your tie. When coming, you fell yeah, asleep. but you used to replace them in the end. Yeah, well, I gave you better ties. Yeah, give me better ties. <laughs> and the always good thing was I, I used to sleep on a plane. I used to put white on my glasses. I, yeah, we used to do the white out or the black sharpie and yes. color your glasses when you'd wake up. One of my all time favorite John Franco drugs, you don't really, you, you said you never did it, but I think you did. We're in the Biltmore Hotel in LA. You want to screw a horse head from the lobby, go up to my room, turn the lights out, uh, put ketchup on my pillows, put the horse head under my bed. <laughs> I walk in, I said I had a dead freaking horse from an animal house in my bed. Uh, I don't know how it got there. I don't know how it got there. <laughs> I think I, they gave you the wrong room. I, I don't know was, how it got there. There was a previous person that was in that room. Well, you stole my keys, too. <laughs> but no. you used to tell me, I, I, it was, you know what? You told me, you taught me really how to get along. That, and I never, you know, the stuff that goes on in the locker room stays away. But I did get back at you one time. Yes, you did. One time, one time, on your birthday. And you can't say that right I now. Can't say, <laughs> I can't say that. I, we, let me say this in a nice way. We Bobby Wine's birthday too. We were coaching. Dallas right. Green was the manager. Right, Fred right, came right. in and danced for everybody. It was yeah. a it was a bonding experience. It too. was a very bonding experience. Yeah. I, I I was kind of shocked that I, I you know it took me three or four days to get over it. Yeah, you know, Johnny. One thing that's not in the book. You know, your stats and all your stats great. With what's your level of, of, of commitment to the community? You know, fourteen years at Santa Claus. You know what you what we did. You especially for nine eleven. I mean, the stats are good, you know, with having, with, you know, but sometimes there's more stuff than just world championships, well, right? Well, yeah, I think just being born and raised here and playing here and giving back to the community, uh, whichever way I could, you know, during the season, you try to pick and choose the ones that are important and then during yeah, the off-season. Yeah, you do. I remember the, the Rango bowling, the bowling yeah, tournaments yeah. you did. Well, that was the, uh, during the off-season. Yeah. We raised money for the March of Dimes. We yeah. did like $2 million. Yeah, great dollars had great guys. You had Peter Bonds and... Uh, yeah. Bobby Bowen. Yeah, we had a quite. A, it was good, good fundraiser. But I think it's important for a player, whether he's from New York or from another city, right. and playing in New York to give back to the community, to reach out uh, and help out any way you can. Whether it's in the uh, you know, go to school and read books, or go to a, a gym and help uh, you know show kids some batting, or just go to a dinner and uh, and uh, and 
be supportive and, and represent the organization. But you had a lot of stuff from your dad who was his sanitation work. Remember the orange shirt mm -hmm. used to wear it all the time. He was a Mets <laughs> fan, right? He, yeah, well, my father was, was a Dodger fan too. Was Brooklyn a Dodger, Dodger fan, right. and then once the Dodgers went right. over to and he LA. Lay, he like brother Jimmy was a close friend yes, to me. Yes, yes. He was a Mets fan. Yeah, my so. brother was a bigger fan than you could imagine. I, one of the one of the stories I always tell is my first year with the Mets was uh, I remember we were playing the Houston Astros and we had bases loaded and two outs and two strikes on a, a batter and uh, Doug Harvey called a balk on me. Really? And the run came in and I was arguing with Doug and I was arguing, arguing. And I looked over Doug's shoulder and there was my brother Jimmy on the fence yelling at Doug. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but the, the bottom of the inning is when Kevin McReynolds came up and hit a two-run homer and we wound up winning by yeah. one run. But I always remember that. Uh, that was one of my first experiences here. You, you know, I remember back, I think it was before the trade, it must have been in 80, early 80s, when Darrell Strawberry hit like a 900 foot home run off you. Why do you have to say 900? No, I just it was, wanted to. It was 400, just, 408 feet. 408 feet. <laughs> but it's a true friend. That's yeah, a friend. Yeah, That's yeah. a friend right there. Yeah, yeah. How, how bad was the tickets for you coming home? Was that, was that tough? Well, back then it wasn't too bad because we were allowed, you know, yeah. six tickets. Yeah. Uh, we were allowed four family and two friends. But when you would come into a city, yeah. I would go up to you yeah. and say, Jay, are you using your tickets today? And you'd say, no. So I'd say, okay, can I use your tickets? And when we go to your city, yeah. you could use my ticket. So it was probably about 85 to 90 tickets a game. Thank yeah. God we only came here three times a year. I, 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 and I let, I let my dad and my wife handle all yeah. the tickets and stuff like that. You still come to the games a lot. You're still yeah. a big fan. I mean, yeah. I come to the games. And you, uh, I still, you know, do some a little work with the organization. Yeah. Obviously, the alumni stuff with you, right? And, and you went uh, with Buck. Buck. Buck appreciates alumni. He yeah. brought the guys here. Yeah, and, went to spring training for five or six days. Got to know some of the guys and watch some of the young talent, some of the pitches throw, uh, and watch some of the games and just uh, listening to Buck and his coaching staff and how the game has changed from back when yeah. I played to all the, the data and all the uh, information that yeah. they give out to all the players. So it's kind of interesting to sit around and listen to it, but. Uh, the game is still played on the field. You got to hit, pitch, run, and catch the ball. Right. Well, catch, catch, catch up with you. It's a great right. book. My Six friend. decades of amazing mixed baseball. John Frank, I want Thanks, to call Jay. It's always good to see you, man. Oh, my man. My, all right, John. You're going to be a Jet fan soon. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs>